is going to be another attempt to make a, a nine inch. I believe that's nine inches. That'll be nine or ten. Ten. A nine inch chopping bowl. This is holly. Big crack here and the pith down here on this end. Up here on this end, the bowl will come out. The rim of the bowl will be about here. Yeah, I can just get three inches there. I've been having a lot of trouble twisting the blanks off of the worm screw. It's not the friction of the screw, it's the friction of the face of the jaws on the bottom of the blank. Now I put paraffin in there a couple times. So what I'm going to do this time, put paraffin on the jaws. And on the grooves, the threads. And on the face of the blank. That should make it easier. Get this dang thing apart later. At ease. Much heavier on this end because it's thicker on this end. So it will be slow going at first. I am going to bring up tail support on this. That's 320. 480, 450, 580, 650, 700. My lathe is not bolted to the bench, and the bench is not bolted to the floor. 850 smooths right up. Oh boy, this is going to be interesting. So we will start out at about 800 RPM. That's the sound of the filter pump in my air shield. I put my weight on the lathe until the RPM gets up to the sweet spot. I could shift the belts to low range and get more torque, but the top speed in low range is only about 550.
the 5 8 bowl gouge is losing its edge, so I switch to the 3 quarter inch. I double check to be sure my divider hasn't somehow mysteriously shifted from 87 millimeters. When I first saw people doing this, I marveled that they could get the circle exactly the right dimension on the very first try. But it's easy. That spinning blank is not perfectly even. You see spinning circles, so it's easy to line up the points of the divider over the same circle on both sides of the center before you inscribe the line. Moving the gouge slowly with light pressure and the flute almost closed yields a very smooth surface. Interesting thing about the Laguna lathe, at least the 1216, is with the power off, if you select it forward, it turns easily. In reverse, not so much. In reverse, it turns reverse easily, but forward, not so much. So if you've got a heavy bowl and you don't like waiting forever for it to spin down, turn it off, put it in reverse, don't turn it on, just put it in reverse and you get some sort of dynamic braking. It slows down very quickly. Kind of weird. Kind of interesting. Okay, now I don't want to go any deeper this way because I have to stay below this pith. It's going to make this a little shallow already. It's a tenon. This is the foot. So from pith to foot, only two and a half inches. It's got to come a little smaller too to get rid of the bark. Here and here. Uh, okay, well, we'll keep going here. Take off more here and start getting the curve in here. I am treating each cut now as a finishing cut because I don't want to reduce the diameter any more than absolutely necessary. Now the three quarter inch is losing its edge. I'll switch to the half inch. When this one gets dull, I'll stop and sharpen everything.
what that uh, machine gun chatter was. Reverted to old habit. The uh, spindle lock on this lathe was originally red. I was always reaching for it to stop the damn thing. Got blue tape on it now, so it doesn't show. I'm well, showing a little red, but the red's worn off my stop button where I painted the black red. Anyway, I reached out and punched the spindle lock. The goddamn thing turning. Never a good idea. But everything's dull now. I'm going to sharpen everything. Maybe sharpen my mind a little bit too. This pith will climb as I go in. So if I come down to eight and a half, nine inches, I might get another half inch here of height. Another modification I just made to my lathe. You want to push the spindle lock? You got to open a door. That's going to prevent absent minded inadvertent reaching over here and hitting that button instead of this button which I need to repaint. So that took about 10 minutes. Problem solved. You start paying attention to shape here. Try to block everything from here up out of my mind. Need to come in. Not very really much. Probably this should be the edge of my foot. Which means it needs to be leveled off a little bit. Start the curve up from there. Take a little off of here, blend it in through here, and then uh, we turn this around. I don't know if this is going to be a blemish or a beauty mark. I'll make one more pass to try to get the outside of the bowl smooth and even. There are still ridges, but it's smooth between the ridges. I think that's the best I can do with a gouge. I'm not really comfortable with scrapers, but I've seen how effective they are at removing this sort of ridge on a curved surface, so I will give it a try. I use a diamond card to freshen up the burr. I'll shear scrape at about a 45 degree angle. Sort of like a road grader scraping a rutted dirt road. I want to take off the ridges without roughing up the surface. Just a little bit more here and there. Oh, 
Almost, but not quite. Okay, finally I'm happy. Now I'll work on the foot and make a shallow tenon and turn this around. A half inch spindle gouge leaves the tenon just a little bit ragged, so I'll clean it up with a spindle detail gouge, a finer tool with a sharper point. There are still a few stray fibers clinging to the tenon. I'll remove much of this waste at the top while it's still firmly on the worm screw and secured by the tailstock. That big crack does not like the scraper. I'll use the three-quarter inch bowl gouge instead. I'm trying to decide how far I need to come down. I can't take out that dark inclusion or I'll be left with a saucer. I do want to get rid of the pith, however. Just a little more cleanup here. Pushing that goddamn spindle lock button jackhammered my nail back up into my finger. Smarts. Okay, this little pit doesn't matter. It ends right here, angling up. This one, don't know yet. Don't know where to put my rings. I don't know where the top of the bowl is yet. As it sits now, three and an eighth to the foot. Maybe two and a half at least. I'm just going to have that pith in it. It's just no reasonable way to avoid that. That bullseye in the center of the frame is not the pith that's the center of the tree. That's just to the right of it in the very edge of the bowl. It's a branch, but it didn't come out perpendicular to the tree trunk. It looks almost like the tree forked there. Interesting. Okay, I don't have to do anything else here. Double check, I'm not exceeding 5 mm, 4. In these step jaws, the tenon will not seat properly if it's more than 5 millimeters long. Okay, now, moment of oh, truth. Will this turn off of this? Open the door so I can push the spindle lock off, off, spindle lock. Yeah, paraffin on the bowl blank, and it comes right off. 
reverse on. If I've done everything right, it'll spin true with no wobble at all. Pretty true spin. Nothing remaining of that crack. I use a rubber band on the drill bit to set the depth. I'm not entirely sure where the rim will be, so I treat each cut as a finishing cut until I'm inside the rim. And then it's just a matter of removing wood. It's like the old joke about how do you carve an elephant? You take a big block of marble and chip away everything that doesn't look like an elephant. It's the same with making a bowl. I was so focused on what I was doing that it didn't occur to me to change the camera position. Nothing exciting happened here anyway, so I'm going to skip ahead. This inclusion, or whatever it is, does not go all the way through. Some sort of... Oh, that's the other pith on the other side. That'll be gone in a minute. There's still just a little bit of pith remaining. The rim is sharp enough to draw blood. Now it isn't. Depth is good and wall thickness is even. Now all I have to do is scrape the inside to get rid of ridges.
finally, I'm satisfied. I want to make this bowl look as much like the customer's first bowl as possible. High speed and a guitar string burn in the accent. The surface is so smooth, I start the sanding with 180 grit. Eighty on the inside and uh, up through 240 and then we'll be done. The bowl driven inertial sander works fine on the outside, but I get better results on the inside with the power sander. Decided to go all the way up to 400 on the outside. I seldom sand anything finer than 320, but this wood was so nice and so smooth, I thought I'd just keep going. And as long as it gets designed, and that should be done. No more concentric sanding lines, no rough grain on the inside, the rim is smoothed up, the outside edge not quite razor sharp anymore, and close to it, 320. Okay. See that being just over eight inches. Started out at ten, but the top widest part was no good. Customer wanted eight to nine inches. Take the tenon off. Put uh, tried and true on this, see what it looks like. There's 900. Three eighths ball gouge, freshly sharpened. This is where I often get into trouble. That a sharp pointed cone is applying splitting pressure on the nub that's left. If I don't stop whittling it down soon enough, the bowl will jump off the lathe. The results are never good. What I have finally learned to do is, as soon as I say to myself, just one more cut, stop. Don't take that one more cut. I have a spindle gouge. Now, turn it down from 900 to about, what is it, 600? The bevel will hold the bowl. 
just like that. Just like that, successfully turned off. Need some sanding, of course, everything always needs sanding. Here's one good shape. Got all those marks out. Nope. Trace right there. It seems there's never an end to sanding. Trace is gone. Still sits level. I am happy. Right and true. What happens when it sits in a container with too much air in it? So I poured it all off into a no loss bag. Bag that you squeeze all the air out of as you use the material. So it's never exposed to air and never skims over. This doesn't take much. I've got enough in this rag for three bowls. Rub it in. Let it sit for an hour or so. And then uh, rub it briskly with a clean cloth. You don't get a glossy spit shine finish but you get good coverage good protection food safe I understand it any finish is food safe once it is fully cured but that may be incorrect so this is beeswax and oil linseed oil now I'll give this an hour or so, come back and wipe it down. Well here's the bowl I've been working on. I think it's the nicest one I've done. Shallow topping bowl for a customer who's also a friend. There are no defects in this whatsoever. One of the nicest things I've turned. It's 8 inches across, 7 inches inside diameter at the rim. This interesting inclusion does not extend to the interior. This microscopic little inclusion of some sort does, but it's microscopic. I think I'm starting to get the hang of this. Here is that bowl in its new home. Thanks for watching.